So you've just completed making all of your individual parts for your bike frame and you've mitered all the tubes, added all the fillets, and you've placed all those parts into your assembly and it looks like this. What happened? The problem is, is that the origin of each of these individual parts is not corresponding to the origin of the assembly. Why is that? This problem occurred when you first inserted your master file into your new part file. When you insert your master into a new part, you have to make sure that the origin of the master and the origin of the new part are correlated. The way to do this is to make sure that when you do the insertion, that you do not click anywhere in the graphics window when inserting the part. Without clicking, drag over to the feature manager and then click on this green check mark. Then you should see that the origin of the part, and in the case of our design, the origin, or rather the center of the bottom bracket shell, should be in alignment with each other. If I roll back down to this original insertion, I see that this frame is way off axis and the origin of the assembly and the center of the bottom bracket shell are nowhere close to each other. That's because this happened during the insertion. I will demonstrate. Insert part, master, and the frame was just clicked somewhere in the middle of the graphics window, and it looks like that this is probably in its proper location, but if we click on the origin, we see that the origin is way over here and the bottom bracket shell is way down here. So one way to fix this is to reinsert the master and then have to redo all of this other work that was in the feature tree. The purpose of this video is to show how to avoid redoing all of that work. Unfortunately, there is no way of just simply redoing this feature and undoing the fact that you clicked in the graphics window and then properly clicking the green check mark. What you have to do instead is edit this feature and redirect where the origin of the master is going to go. You have to do a few extra steps to make that happen. So here's what you have to do. Edit this feature we get back to the feature manager that tells us that we want to insert solid bodies. Normally we would keep locate part unchecked because we were using the green check mark to locate the part at the origin, but we didn't do that right. So now what we have to do is actually check locate part with the move copy feature. And when we hit the green check mark here, it brings us to a new window for locate part. You want the version of this window that says Mate Settings. If it looks like this, what you want to then do is go down to this box that says Constraints, and it will bring you back to this Mate Settings. What we need to do is find a way to get the center of this bottom bracket shell aligned with our origin over here. Unfortunately, there is no convenient feature on the bottom bracket shell all by itself that we can align with that origin but we are kind of lucky in this particular case. We have the axis of the seat tube passing through the origin, and we have the axis of the bottom bracket shell passing through the origin. If we can get those two axes aligned with the origin, then the bike will be in the proper location. Now, we don't have any actual axes for this frame in this inserted part. But if we were to click on the outside cylindrical surfaces of these two parts, SolidWorks will find a virtual axis for those. So the first thing I'm going to do on mate settings is click on the origin, as you see here. And then I'm going to click on this outside surface of the bottom bracket shell, which is a cylinder. When I do that, it pops the bottom bracket shell so that its virtual axis is in alignment with the origin here. But it's still a little bit off axis this way. That's where the C tube is going to help us. So I click Add to finish that first set of mates. And now this time I click on the origin of the part again. 
and I click on the cylindrical surface of my seat tube and that moves it over just that little bit to get it aligned that way. Now we are aligned in the X, Y, and Z axes. Click the check mark that finishes that feature and then I can roll back down again. Actually, I didn't even need to roll back up, but we see all of the features that came after the insertion are still in place, nothing is broken. And if we go back to our assembly, we see that the down tube that we were just working on is now properly located with respect to this bottom bracket shell. In my particular example here, the one part that in fact was done correctly was the bottom bracket shell itself. All the others had that misaligned origin problem. So if I go back and do this repair work to any of these parts which are misaligned, they will all pop into the proper location when you see them in this assembly. An alternate method for doing this is to add a coordinate system to the master file. Coordinate system is like an origin, but you can put that new origin anywhere you want. You go to reference geometry, coordinate system, and we won't fill anything out here. So we just hit the green check mark and it puts a new X, Y, Z coordinate system right at the origin of our master. Now let's go back to another part that needs to be repaired. We will pick the chain stay. So here's our chain stay. Here's our origin in the obviously incorrect location. I'm going to edit the insert part feature. And we see, of course, we have solids checked. And now we want to also check coordinate systems and check locate part with move copy feature. This time, now that we can see this new coordinate system, in the part we are inserting, we have a feature that we can conveniently align with the origin of our part. So I click open the plus sign here on my inserted feature, and I see not only solid bodies, but that coordinate system that is part of that inserted part. Click the coordinate system, it pops into the mate settings, click the origin, and we see the part jump to the origin properly aligning like we want hit the green check mark and all these other features automatically rebuild themselves properly now we go back to our assembly and we see that the chain stay that we just fixed is also properly fitting up against the bottom bracket shell. And because the left side chain stay was a mirror of the right side, that one is properly in place as well. So this is a pretty annoying problem, but if you know how to fix it, you can do it in a couple of minutes without having to redo any of the other work that you've done.